knife. The rocket. Under my knife. The skull. Two thousand plus. Science fiction adventures from the world of tomorrow. The years beyond 2000 A.D. 2000 plus presents the rocket and the skull. Have you heard from Colonel Bradbury yet? No, sir. I've been trying to for ten minutes. We'll try again. Yes, sir. B for base to R for rocket. B for base to R for rocket. Come in, R for rocket. Every time Bradbury is more than five minutes late, I get the jitters. He's too important for this project not to know where he is every moment. Yes, sir. B for base to R for rocket. Come in, R for rocket. Try a scanner beam. He should be on the all clear level out of Detroit. Yes, sir. B for base to R for rocket. Come in, R for rocket. We can't afford to have anything happen to him. The first experiment is being conducted tomorrow morning. Bradbury is the only man who knows every step of the routine. B for base to R for rocket. Come in, R for rocket. You're not getting him. Cut the scanner and return to standard beam. Yes, sir. Come in, R for rocket. He should have left an hour earlier. And he could have taken a scheduled flight. But no, he has to work up to the last minute and then fly his own plane to get here in time. B for base to R for rocket. R for rocket. B for base. This is R for rocket. Oh, there he is, sir. Beam contact at 14 over 6. About 80 miles out of Detroit. Give me that mic. Brad... This is General Hilton. Are you receiving me? Go ahead, General. What happened? We couldn't contact you. I had some trouble with my stabilizer. Thought I might have to land. But it's okay now. Are you sure? We can't have anything happen to you. Don't worry, sir. The first experiment is being conducted tomorrow morning. Everything is ready for you. Good. The entire general staff will be there. Maybe the president himself. Is there anything you want me to have done before you come in? Brad, anything you want done? Hello, R for rocket. I'm not getting a response. B for base to R for rocket. Come in, R for rocket. Funny, sir, he was receiving clear as a bell. Come in, R for rocket. He said the stabilizer had been acting up. That can mean a lot of trouble at 700 miles an hour. What's that? Automatic distress signal, sir. Coming from Colonel Bradbury's plane. Hello, Crash Central. This is B for base. Automatic distress signal coming in on channel 420. Colonel Bradbury flying a rocket jet X-93. Hey, it stopped. B for base to crash central. Automatic signal cease to register at beam contact 16 over 8. Carry out emergency crash procedures. Repeat, Colonel Bradbury's rocket jet X-93 has crashed on beam position 16 over 8. Check out. I'm glad you were able to get here, General. We're going to operate very shortly. I tell you, it's a miracle he's alive. It will be more of a miracle if he's alive one hour from now. You've got to save him. He's an important man. Yes, the White House called and spoke to the Pentagon. We know Colonel Bradbury is important, but a shattered skull is very difficult. I know you'll do all you can. Stay right here, General. We'll keep you informed. Well, it's out of our hands. I have the report from Crash Central, sir. Well? Apparently, Colonel Bradbury used the catapult parachute just before the plane crashed. Otherwise, he would have been killed instantly. When he was catapulted up, his chute didn't open. He fell into a group of trees. Poor Brad. It might have been better if he'd stayed in the ship. You heard what the doctor said? Yes, sir. A shattered skull. The one brain we need to carry out the experiment tomorrow, and this is what that out. So... Planned. Sun. Scalpel. Not my brown earth. Planned. Systolic. 80 over 40. The patient's thinking, sir. More oxygen. Yes, sir. Patient responding, sir. Good. Scalpel. Sun. Planned. Scalpel. I'm completely 
me out, Lieutenant. Have you a cigarette? Yes, sir. Here you are. Thanks. Oh, this waiting. Waiting. It's been more than an hour. Brain surgery is very delicate, sir. May take another hour or even more. You carried out my orders to postpone the experiment? Yes, sir, until further notice. If Brad doesn't live, we'll have to start another man all over. May set the project back a year, and the year could be dangerous. Oh, you look surprised, Lieutenant. You don't know what this experiment's all about, do you? Well, I see the code name for it on the paper, sir, but it never has a description. After all, it's marked top secret. Maybe it's about time you were told with Brad upstairs hanging onto life by a thread. I'm going to need a bright young man to give me some important assistance. You've come through with pretty good colors these last many hours. Thank you, sir. Well, we'll talk more about it in a little while. Right now, I'm going to stretch out and try to rest. I'm about done in. If I hear anything, I'll awaken you, sir. I don't expect I'll sleep. Not with the fate of the world depending on a surgeon's knife upstairs in the operating room. Bums. Bums. Adjust the light, nurse. Scalpel. Probe. Mm. Quite a bone fragment. Sponge. Clamps. Systolic. 70 over 40. Oxygen again. It's pure oxygen now, sir. Nurse, prepare for transfusion. 60 over 40. The patient's sinking, sir. That's right, nurse. Go ahead, Dr. Bowen. Hurry. Condition same, doctor. He's getting the transfusion. Let me help you, Dr. Bowen. There. Well? Systolic. 80 over 40. Good. He's responding. All right. Scalpel. Probe. Now. It's too nervous even to rest. How long has it been? Almost two hours, sir. Two hours. Just about now the general staff would be arriving and Brad would be checking everything for the experiment in the morning. Lieutenant... Have you any guess about that experiment, about what it is? Well, I... My guess is it, it's about a new kind of aircraft. Oh, why do you say that? Well, it's because it's an Air Force project. Well, I wouldn't say you were warm, but you aren't cold either. The experiment and the reason it's so important concerns a rocket to the moon. A rocket to the moon? But... But why, sir? Why send one there? Who controls the moon controls the world. If we had rockets on the moon, we could compel peace on Earth. The United Nations would press a button and wipe any aggressor off the face of the earth. That means space travel. You don't mean that we... No, are... Lieutenant, we haven't found the way to send rocket ships with human beings through space. Not yet, anyway. But the rocket we're experimenting with is a two-way rocket. It can land on the moon and return from the moon. All electronically controlled from the earth. Sounds fantastic, sir. Oh, it's quite feasible, I assure you. But we have reason to believe that we're not the only nation thinking of this. Time is of the essence. Colonel Bradbury knows more about operating these rockets than any man alive. And just on the verge of the experiment, this has to happen. Shh. Quiet. General Hilton. Yes? Uh, Dr. Rizzo asked me to take a message down to you from the operating room. Where? He's dead, isn't he? Uh, no, General. He's still hanging on. Dr. Rizzo says that he now has a 30% chance of surviving. Thank God. Part of Colonel Bradbury's skull has been fragmented. A head plate will have to be put on. Because of the size of the area, a new metal alloy plate will be used. It will take at least five or six more hours. Dr. Riggio suggests you go home, General, where you'll be more comfortable. The hospital will phone you if anything happens. <laughs> Coming out of it. Uh, Colonel Bradbury, can uh, you hear me? Uh, this is Dr. Rigio. Uh, Nurse, open the blinds a little. Mm -hmm. Good. Now ease his back with the pillow. I'll hold him. <laughs> Fine, thank you. Ten days since the operation, and he's just now coming out of it. He's a strong man. Almost any other person would have died. Colonel Bradbury. Mm -hmm. Colonel Bradbury, can you hear me? The, the base rocket, our the rocket. He's beginning uh, to talk. Uh, uh, Nurse, have Doctor Keys come in at once. Stay by the off. Our the rocket, General. Well, 
Right, it's huh? all right, Colonel. Take it easy. <laughs> you call for me. The nurse said he was coming out of it. He's talking erratically. Typical stuff. Uh, 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 rocket base. Yeah, that sort of thing. Well, you technical jargon. Air Force may know. Mars. Martian. Mars? Mar? Uh, uh, Martian? They use all sorts of code names. Mars is probably one of them. I think in about 48 hours, he ought to be out of shock completely. We can call General Hilton. Tell him to come over day after tomorrow. Uh, 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 take it easy, Colonel. Six months, and you ought to be in pretty good shape. Nurse, keep him comfortable. Dr. Keyes and I will leave now. Uh, rock. Stabilizer off. Wrong. Something wrong. <laughs> Must call General. Call General Hilton. Mars. Ma Martian. Mars. <laughs> Read that back to me, please. Memorandum to General Staff. One, the new experiment is tentatively planned for April 3rd, 2000 plus 6. Two, all security measures have been taken. Three, although severely handicapped by Colonel Bradbury's absence, newly trained specialists will endeavor to fill the gap. Anything more, General? No, no, Lieutenant. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I should say no, Captain. You like that extra bar? I certainly do, sir. Well, you've earned it, Bob. You've been a great help to me. Okay, note the memo is top secret and send it back similarly to the Pentagon. No, oh, I'll take it. Never mind. Hello, Hilton. Who? The President. Oh, yes, Mr. President. Of course, sir. Well, I've just prepared a memorandum, but that's only two weeks, Mr. President. We assumed about 60 days. Oh. Yes, sir. A work day and night to do it. Now, thank you, Mr. President. Captain... Change the date in the first paragraph of the memo. The new experiment is to take place in two weeks. General, that's almost impossible. I know it, and you know it. But there's one man who doesn't know it, and he says it's got to be done. <laughs> I'm not disposed to argue with the President of the United States. I'd like to double-check some of my notes on Colonel Bradbury with you. Of course, Doctor. Well, this afternoon, the General's coming to see him. Colonel Bradbury. Yes. He needs months of convalescence. And he's not too lucid. Now, that's the point. He's not too lucid, but weak as he is, he talks normally for a while. Makes sense. And then that strange reaction sets in. I have observed it myself three times. Well, head injury cases are quite unpredictable. Perhaps, but according to my notes, Colonel Bradbury's strange reaction has taken place Always either at 10 a.m. or 5 p.m. Of the three instances I've observed, two have been at 10, one at 5. Mm, well, that is unusual. And in each instance, well, I can see now in my mind's eye, he's sitting in a long bed, talking quite sensibly, although in a weak, weak voice, suddenly he becomes tense. He grimaces as if his head were in pain. He even clutches the bedclothes with tight fists. He appears to be rigid. Mm. Then, after a few minutes, Invariably comes a flood of disjoint, the disconnected sentences about messages, emergency, crisis, state of the world, and Mars. Our General Hilton is going to visit the Colonel this afternoon at about five o'clock. And you expect the Colonel to have another strange reaction? I don't know. Well, surely General Hilton realizes that a man who's had severe surgery can't. I be... can't tell what the General will realize, but my fear is that he may feel the Colonel is not improving as well as he might. And he may call in other doctors. But we're doing everything humanly possible. That is the irony of the situation. I could have killed the colonel in surgery. It would have been very easy. But where important government officials are concerned, I get worried. If we ever were investigated carefully, they might find out who you and I really are. And that would be dangerous. Very dangerous indeed. <laughs> Thank you, nurse. Hello, Brad. Hello, General. I understand you wanted to see me. I came as soon as I could. Sit. Sit down. Sure, Brad. Don't worry about me. 
Rad, we're rescheduling the experiment. Do you feel up to answering a few questions about it? Experiment. Something to tell you. Sure, Brad, sure. I know there's a lot you want to tell me, but well, you're still a sick guy, so... Suppose I just ask you a few questions and you answer them yes or no. That'll save your energy. Time. What time is it? Why, it's a few seconds before five o'clock. Why? Coming. Message coming. Message coming. What message? Trying to tell you. Couldn't tell anyone else. Mars. Martians. Mars. Martians. Trying to tell me what? <laughs> Brad. For heaven's sake. <laughs> What's the matter, Brad? <laughs> Nurse. Doctor, something's happening to Colonel Bradbury. Hurry! Hurry! Thanos. Thanos. Doctor Ritchie, can you hear me? Mars. Mars. General Hilton is here, too. You remember? And Fire General. Strange things happen to the human mind. Uh, his skull is a metal plate. Uh, 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 Mars. Calling Mars. Earth calling Mars. Message. Like a fist. Look at him. Danger reporting. Earth calling Mars. You are received. Mars receiving your call. Proceed. None of that, Barry. Colonel. The nurse will try a hypo. Get one for me, please. Uh, 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 Thank you, Nan. Now I'll inject. Uh, should relax for the moment. Very incapacitated. Government has ordered experiment to proceed. Here are your further orders. The experiment must fail. You are to be certain that all tests are taken. There. Hypo has released his tension. He'll sleep now. He'll be all right when you wake him. Yes, but what happened to him, Doctor? I'm not certain, General, but in a few days we may be able to tell more. I know you're doing everything possible, Doctor, and we're grateful for your saving Brad's life. But mightn't it be wise to call in some specialists, some other doctors for consultation? There's so much information and advice we need from Colonel Bradbury. Call in other doctors? Well, General, I don't know that that's necessary. It's so strange watching him, almost as if he were listening to something. You know, now that I think of it, he did say something about a message. Do you think there's any connection? I hardly think so, General. After all, we didn't hear anything. No, no. I'm afraid it was just the erratic talk of a sick and injured brain. General, you really went through an experience watching the colonel like that. Captain, he was almost in a fit. Had some crazy idea he was getting messages. Messages? Just hallucinations. He was off his rocker for a while. I'm afraid I was a little brusque with Dr. Reggio. He's a fine man, but I'd feel better if some other medicos looked at Brad, too. Arrange for some specialist from Army Medical to examine him, will you, Captain? Yes, sir. I'll do it promptly. And one thing more. On the experiment file, you'll find a... General Wilton's office. Uh, one moment, please. For you, sir. Pentagon, intelligence section. Intelligence? Oh. Hello. General Wilton. Yes? Yes? Are you certain? Will the president and the chief of staff been informed? Good. Yes, I'll be here in 15 minutes. Right. What are my car, Captain? Things are happening. Yes, sir. General Hilton's car stand by at West Entrance. What things, sir? Intelligence reports that the Eastern Alliance is definitely planning a moon rocket for blast off in six days. You know what that means if they get there before the United Nations. Six days, and we won't be ready for 14 days. We really wanted three months. That's right. But how? Somehow they must have found out about our experiment and have agents that feed for some of our vital data. That's what the emergency meeting is about. Well, your car's ready, General. Good luck. We're going to need it, Captain. We're going to need it. Keys. Dr. Keys. Have you heard? What is it? Some other doctors are examining Colonel Bradbury. Yes, I just met them. What? I... Of course, I gave them permission. I had no choice. General Hilton requested it yesterday. Who are they? That's just it. Army medical. Army! How you can be so cold and calculating in surgery and so nervous now, I cannot understand. Your record here is flawless. Your operation on Bradbury is superb. 
No suspicion will attach to you or to me. If we conduct ourselves in a normal and professional manner, what is the risk? That they are the army. Now, that means an intelligence section. They have routines about these things. We have no choice but to keep up appearance. I know, I know. But if they ever find out that we are the agents of the Eastern Alliance, that we have masterminded the theft of certain moon rocket data, they will be ruthless, Dr. Key. Ruthless. <laughs> General Hilton's office. Oh, I'm sorry, the general isn't here. This is his aide. No, sir, I, I don't know when he'll return. I suggest you place the information on our private facsimile line in code. Our extension is 83. I'll then give the papers to the general when he arrives. Yes, sir, I'll turn the facsimile line on now, sir. We can receive it at once. Thank you. Regarding Colonel Bradbury. Item one. Good heavens, Dr. Regio. Item two. The metal plate surgically applied to Colonel Bradbury's skull. The metal skull plate. Martian voices. So that's what the Colonel's hallucinations are. It's fantastic. There, the message is ended. Very quickly. Military police. Hello, General Hilton's office. At Central Hospital, there are two staff doctors, Dr. Rijo and Dr. Keyes. Right. Place them under arrest at once. Hello? Message headquarters, please. This is General Hilton's aide. When the general returns, tell him I'll be at Central Hospital talking to Colonel Bradbury. Colonel, I'm, I'm the general's aide. You can describe the voices to me. Now, what happened? I, my whole head vibrates. Very painful. Then I hear voices. What are they saying? They're talking to Mars. Martians. Martians. Well, apparently, the metal plate on your head somehow picks up certain high-frequency radio waves. At least that's the theory of the Army Medical Examiner. But the Martian, they want to stop the moon rocket. Enemies from another world. No, Colonel, you can't really believe that. You, you must have misunderstood. The real enemies are the Eastern Alliance. But their agents have been caught. Their moon project won't take place for a long time as a result. Now you just take it easy, sir. But the Army's going to track down that wavelength that bothers your head. Then you'll recuperate peacefully. But Captain... True, wait. Excuse me, sir. It's almost five o'clock. I've, I've got to be going, sir. Just take it easy, please. send the message to Mars on the regular wavelength at 5 o'clock. Hereafter, you will be alternate wavelength. I will submit a report explaining how our communications were discovered. But you can report this. The Eastern Alliance agents have been captured by the Americans. This reduces the chances of the Earth sending a moon rocket from two to only one. I will see to it that that one does not succeed. Are you positive you can execute this plan? Without question. Go on. You may report to my superiors on Mars that their observation base on the moon is safe from discovery. Mars will continue to be the only planet controlling outer space. That is all. It shall be reported. Captain, 
I just read that facsimile message in my office. Came as quickly as I could. Now, what on earth is happening? Uh, nothing on earth is happening, General. Now, what are you talking about? Well, I mean, everything's all right now, sir, isn't it? The Eastern Alliance has been taken care of, and there's reason to believe Colonel Bradbury's weird hallucinations won't recur anymore. Oh, those are the two best pieces of news I've heard all day. Captain, I don't know what I'd do without you. Thank you, sir. I just try to do the best I can for my country. <laughs> Next week, another exciting adventure from the world of tomorrow, from the years beyond 2000 A.D. Be sure to listen. 2000 Plus is produced by Dreyer and Renelson Productions, Incorporated. In today's cast, Arnold Robertson portrayed General Hilton, Will Griffiths was the lieutenant, Gregory Morton was Dr. Riggio, Nat Poland was Dr. Was Dr. Colonel Bradbury, and Merle Jones was Dr. Keyes. <laughs> The orchestra was conducted by Emerson Buckley, music composed by Elliot Jacoby. Sound, Walt Shaver and Adrian Penner. Engineer, Bob Aldrich. This is Ken Marvin speaking. The feature was transcribed.